Tom, thank you for taking the time today to talk to us about Pine Creek and its trout and fly hatches and what what we might be able to use to uh, to catch them. This is a, an exciting time of year. We uh, have lots of trout left. Uh, we have introduced lots of trout through the Brown Trout Club uh, just last week. The state is going to introduce more trout, so we won't have a shortage of trout. Uh, Mother Nature just gave us two inches of water, so that should resolve uh, the water problems. And we have great hatches this time of year. Most people aren't aware of it. They don't take a, a place throughout the whole day like our hatches do in May. So you have to catch the hatches in the morning and the evening. Uh, but the unique part of fishing this time of year uh, is, is the fact that you're not battling with a whole lot of other fishermen, which makes it kind of nice and you have a lot of stream to fish. And you can throw the most unusual patterns in the world that you would never fish in the springtime. So part of my experience in running the shop in the spring, we really, really work hard to follow the hatches from the nymph through the emerger, uh, end of the duns and the spinners. This time of year, we throw some really strange looking flies at fish, uh, which you found out when you went bass fishing. You started a couple weeks ago and you found out with the bass flies, you started <laughs> catching more large trout than you did large bass. Yes. Uh, which is a, a, a really neat situation. Years ago, um, when we when we started all of this, we were very oriented toward aquatic hatches. And I'll have to tell you a very quick story of an introduction uh, that I had to uh, Slate Run, Slate Run area, some of it's uh, really wonderful people. In about 1966, I had just gotten out of the Marine Corps and I was looking for places to uh, fish and kind of be in a nice quiet atmosphere and be around nice friendly people. And uh, I met a gentleman at the Waterville Hotel who was telling me about Slate Run. He said, oh, he said, if you're going to trout fish, you have to go to Slate Run. So I, I located Slate Run and uh, I became acquainted with some people. And the very next weekend, I made my trip back to Slate Run. And I was fishing behind a hotel. And in those days, we, we all wore those crazy glasses with the little slits in the eyes and little shades over it. And we fished 7X Luxor Tippet, and which you changed about every third cast because it would spin on you. And I was fishing, and there were two gentlemen behind me, obviously trying to crawl in under my skin. I was making every attempt to ignore them. And I was catching trout, very proud of myself on my wonderful seven and a half foot bamboo uh, Orvis bat and kill fly rod. And every time I'd catch a trout, they'd make a remark. Look at that, he's gotta be a small fish expert. No one could fish in that many <laughs> large fish and keep catching small fish. So I ignored it and ignored it. And finally, every I couldn't take it anymore. And I turned around and I said, well, I don't see you guys catching any fish. And the ones who looked at me and made direct eye contact and said, would you like to? And I said, yeah, I, I would, as a matter of fact. And he got up off the bench and he strutted over, grabbed my bat and kill fly rod out of my hand, picked up the, my tippet, looked at my size 22 midge, tore the 7X midge and all, threw it out in slate run, reached in his pocket, pulled out this giant ant that was probably on a number 12 3X long hook, tied a knot in it, cast it out. The first one he's drifting down, hooked the fish, put the rod in my hand and said, look at him and said, that's the way we fish. And I'm looking back at him and I got the nicest trout on that I had all day. And he walked away and they went back down and they were laughing and saying, well, do you like catching trout like that? Although we know that you're an expert, you go after the small fish. Do you enjoy that? I was just really stunned because I found out these people weren't trying to get under my skin just to be idiots. They, they wanted to join my fun. And they wanted to see me have more fun by catching larger fish. And uh, that was a friendship of, uh, that lasted for many, many years. Both of those gentlemen have passed away now. Uh, Jim Emery and Freddie Hawk. Wow. And they were wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, they went out of their way that day to get my attention 
and uh, introduced me to something that I wasn't aware of. And you took it the right way. I took it. I took <laughs> it the right. At first, I was annoyed with him, and I thought, now you know, we uh, in the service. I um, I was just kind of tired of the military type confrontational uh, uh, conflicts that you're in all the time, and. That was just the beginning of Vietnam, and I had gotten back before we were officially there. And all I wanted to do was go trout fishing without confronting people. And as it turned out, I met super wonderful people and, and a fabulous place, which I ended up making my home. I lived here now for 35 years. Well, Tom, could you, it, 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 uh, as you start to go over some of those, those big kind of flies that that those guys kind of started your introduction to could you give run give us a brief rundown of what's hatching well this fall it's going to be very important to have slate drakes this is a wonderful pattern Jim Omen ties these for me it's a parachute fly uh, absolutely wonderful pattern we've produced thousands and thousands of dozens of this particular fly and it's just, it's, a, it's an incredibly durable pattern and very, very effective. That is probably one of the most important patterns. Another very good one is a gentleman, this gentleman, Tom Forward from Sheridan, Montana, uh, produces this pattern. This is called a Pine Creek PCS Light Cahill, uh, Pine Creek Special Light Cahill. Uh, again, tied in a parachute pattern very, very durable flies, float extremely well. You can get a good view of that. That's a valuable fly. Now you have to remember a lot of the hatches this time of year are in late in the afternoon and evening, uh, but that, that probably will start changing here as the weather really gets cool. Our water's in the uh, low 60s right now peaking at the mid 70s that probably is going to change very quickly to the mid 50s to high 50s at which time we should start getting patches through the day that along with <laughs> we have crane flies this time of year and one of the uh, gentlemen that taught me to fish giant flies uh, at the old uh, initial slate run hotel uh, Russ Mowry this is one of Russ's this is called a Pine Creek special this fly is absolutely a killer. It doesn't matter where you fish it. Uh, again, very, very durable. Uh, I don't have a, I have a great source to tie this fly for me, but they can't do the thousand dozen a year for me like Russ did. And uh, we have a gentleman uh, that works here. Jed Grove produces this fly in a very limited uh, numbers. Uh, other shops in the area have had to have this, have tried to have this imitated overseas and when they, when they brought it back uh, it was a real bomber it just did not work so uh, Russ's fly lives on through Jed Grove and uh, Jed produces maybe 25 50 dozen of these a year uh, people absolutely love them and when I put them out they disappear immediately that's another great fly as we get into this season which you found out bass fishing uh, we don't really have to follow the hatches. We can come here and open the secret drawer right here in the shop. You're really going to open that drawer? <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a fairly popular, not overly well-known fly, but a very, 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 fairly popular Chernobyl ant. The Chernobyl ant uh, is a western pattern. Uh, designed to fish the big heavy runs in the western rivers. Works wonderful on Pine Creek. Uh, we have the big-eyed hopper, and again, you look at these and you'd think, are you really telling me that you can catch trout on that thing in Pine Creek? Uh, yes, we are, and you can catch a lot of trout, and generally when you catch trout on this guy, it's a very nice fish. Uh, they, we were put, they were put in as bass flies, and we found out they're wonderful trout flies. Probably the, the sleeper in all of it is the psycho ant. The psycho ant is an extremely neat pattern which we put in to catch bass and following what I learned over the years uh, 
big flies catch big trout. And here's a neat pattern, psycho ant. If you look at that and you'll go, wow, and really a trout fly. If you look at the underside of it, it looks like a caterpillar, extremely effective. It's got a lot of weight, it lands with authority, lets the fish know that there's a, a food source that just arrived, has closed cell foam on the back, it's, it floats very well. That, that is just a tremendous fly. October caddises come off this time of year. Here is our standard pattern. Tom Forward out in uh, Sheridan, Montana ties this. Very effective pattern. But we also have this <laughs> heavy closed cell pattern now. And again, very unique. Land with authority. That's the Orvis pattern, right? This is the Orvis pattern. Called the Yak. Yak, the Yak. And again, <laughs> a, just a, a surprisingly good fly. So fall fishing can really be exciting. And not only is it exciting because there are lots of fish left and you can catch trout uh, this time of year, a lot like we did in the spring, but what's so neat about it, we can use monstrous big flies. And it's really fun. You go out there with your 4X tippet, you don't have to squint the way I was doing that in 1966 behind the hotel. Uh, you know, land fish and play them half to death before you land them. Uh, you can catch them on these large flies, uh, land them correctly, get them back in the water, and move on. Tom, unless we have flood conditions, uh, and these hatches keep going like this. Well, we have the psycho, so that we don't need that to hatch. <laughs> no. But uh, I'm really thinking about fishing all the way to Christmas. I think we have a, a good opportunity at this point. Uh, we've been going into these uh, warming weather conditions. Uh, last year you could fish well into December without a problem. So we'll see what happens. Just because you get an early snow, it melts and it's out of here. Uh, large, large stone flies, uh, fished in very slow water, down deep, uh, are very effective patterns. And of course the black and olive woolly buggers? <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, the woolly bugger uh, was tied by the initial one by uh, Russ Blessing, uh, who was a wonderful gentleman. Russ has passed away now. But uh, Russ invented that fly many, many, many years ago, and it's just become a mainstay. You couldn't hardly find a trout fisherman that doesn't have a woolly bugger yes. in his box. Well, Tom, thank you very much for taking this time. And, You're welcome. And maybe we can come back in a few more weeks and, and update another video on what's happening. Can't wait. Thank Thanks. you again. Yep, see you.